Hi, everyone. This is Ray Luskin, and I am so excited today. I have two wonderful women with us, Lisa Rasmussen and Lauren Sharpton, and I have met them before, and they're, they're wonderful. So Lisa is a visual artist, a teacher, and an environmentalist. Lauren is an artist and a proud mom, and very busy with them still. And But they found time to come together to create an incredible organization called Art is Moving. So we're just going to dive right in so you can learn more about these incredible women and the work they're doing in the world. So who wants to go first and tell us a little bit about their background, who they are as an artist, how, you know, I know you, you started early, um, Lisa, and, you know, those kind of things. And why don't you start? And then, Lauren, you'll, then we'll go to you. Well, I'm Lisa, and I think I have over two decades in terms of transformative art teaching and developing programs. I've taught at-risk populations, like in foster care system, to elders, to um, to women, and then I run retreats, um, like women's empowerment retreats in Greece. So that's fun. Um, art is my life, and I have something called the Harmony Institute, which is basically where art is a catalyst for transformation and healing. All right, perfect. Yeah. All right, Lauren, you're up. Yeah, uh, let's see. I probably started photographing when I was about 14 and fell in love with photography. And that led me to my undergrad. And then I jumped in to get my MFA. That's where I met Lisa. Um, and as an artist, what I do now is I like to sort of cultivate and create community by um, inventing interactive art projects. Uh, one of those, of course, is Art is Moving, the nonprofit, and then I have my own personal art uh, that does kind of pretty much the same thing. I also raise three boys uh, at the same time. We take a lot of art breaks together, and I um, have a bakery, too. So that's also I another. I never knew that about you, that you had a bakery. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I learned something new today. Another so, art form. Yeah. You, you know, let's talk about creativity in itself. How do you define creativity? Yeah, so um, I would say that our, you know, my outlook has always been a little bit controversial in the art world because, uh, and Lisa agrees with me, this is how we connected really, is that I believe that everything is art and I believe that everyone is an artist. Um, it's just about finding that part of you that um, helps you express yourself. Um, and I'm really into experience-based art making. Uh, so basically it's not necessarily about the object that you're looking at, but it's the experience you're having while looking at the object or it's the experience you're having while creating the work. So yeah, that's how I would define art and creativity. I would, I, I agree with that. <laughs> I think also creativity is an intentional act of expression and, you know, you can use it to heal yourself. You can use it to, um, it's basically like creating, like not creating something new, but like taking the leap to an action that, that you create something from within yourself, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I love your concept and what you say, because creativity to me is not just being a, like a visual artist, which most people say, oh, I'm not creative. I can't draw. Right. You know, it's, it's so much more. And, mm -hmm. and we do it every day in our parenting, whether we're an architect, where, whether we're a programmer, whatever it is in life. If we bring an attitude of creativity, which I think is about imagination being expressed, you know, and be made reality, whatever that form is, I think that changes the, co the, the conversation a lot and takes pressure off of people, you know, so I love what you're saying. And um, I do agree with you. So <laughs> that's hey, that's why we're friends, you know, so, yeah, you know. Yes. so let's, let's talk about, you know, what are the benefits actually of being in a creative process? You know, you, you've talked about you work with people, you know, with, with at-risk kids and things like that. Are you, let's talk about the actual benefits. There's emotional, there's physical, there, there's mental. So let's talk about that. I always love to think about the new neural pathways that are being created because you're doing something that's totally new. And then I always like to think about it as too, is like, I know that creativity comes from your unconscious or your subconscious. So you're pulling it out of that field and making it conscious. And so there's like, you can, you can there's a light shining on it and you can really learn about yourself through that process. So that's a huge benefit. <laughs> yeah, I would, uh, I always, when I just try to describe why I'm sort of obsessed with people taking art breaks to folks who may not 
quite understand why I'm so passionate about it. Um, my the most successful way I've found to explain it is that it's this amazing magical tool for communication. And it's a it's a communication not only with uh, the, the outside world, but more importantly, it's communication with yourself. Um, it's it's like a taking a self discovery journey, uh, you know. And and really, honestly, art is one of the few things that kind of enables you to do that. And I think the reason, like the way it does, um, is that. It, it opens up a part of you that is otherwise closed off. Mm -hmm. It's a bridge, you know, yeah. I think it's a bridge. a bridge. I like that. I, I think of it too. There are so many, you know, you can get into the details and the studies, whether you're working with Alzheimer's patients, mm -hmm. you know, things like that, how music, again, it's not necessarily drawing or painting. It can be, but music mm -hmm. is a big piece of that. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're movement, dance, you know, all these things that, we, we take for granted on a daily basis, yet that's what I think of as art breaks. And I'd love for you to talk about art, you know, art breaks right now. And I, I'm honored, I'm gonna be speaking on, on the third with you about you know, your 11th program. I mean, it's pretty incredible. So go ahead and talk about it a little bit. Lauren, you, you kind of, you can talk yeah, about so, that. Um, we, yeah, so this will be the 11th annual Art Break Day celebration and the concept was basically created because Lisa and I, through our other projects, discovered that the easiest way to get people to make art is to sort of kind of jump in front of them and <laughs> just say, hey, you want to do it? And so Art Break Day is this day where volunteers across the world set up art making spaces in the public. And so it's in places that you wouldn't normally think would have art going on. And so we get people who wouldn't normally make art to sit down together and create. And so um, it's been amazing to watch because with every single year, sometimes, you know, at the beginning, Lisa and I were doing it together and we would watch these people who would never even acknowledge each other on the street, sit down and be there for a couple of hours and, and you know, sort of exchange information at the end because they were forever friends. And, you know, art was, basically the reason for that because it does it breaks down barriers it builds bridges and it's a way to indirectly talk about deep feelings and also just connect with people in a way where you find some common ground and so, so what are some of the activities that you've seen over the years that have been really positive that maybe if somebody who's listening now even though if they're not going to participate in September you know, they, they could take back to their community, you know, or their family even. So what are some we, of your favorite projects? We've always done it really simple. When we first started, it was a piece of paper, Sharpies, acrylic paint, and pencils, I think. And mm -hmm. so what we did in the beginning is, you know, you we set up in um, San Francisco in the middle and we just, people randomly walking by would go, hey, you want to take an art break? And they just sit down. So it's a real simple, and some of the supplies are even like, elementary school supplies, you know, me oil pastels. So very simple, um, just to get, just to take the action to start creating. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we've had, we've had other communities um, create work together. So, you know, we've had people just lay a canvas out on the ground and then invite mm -hmm. people to um, create the way they want to. We had someone do a, a handprint painting where every person that walked by put their own hand, hand uh, print. And we had someone paint the side of a, you know, semi truck. Uh, so that's, it's really whatever you think would work for your community. And um, I stick to, uh, you know, pencils, markers, collage, and clay, uh, because it feels like there's one thing that everybody can sort of be okay with um, working with. Um, it, it feels approachable, I think. It's less as many things that are not intimidating because you will get those people that are like, well, no, I can't draw. Uh, no, I can't paint or, um, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, my mom has the best responses and she's like, well, just, just, you know, just swoosh the paint around. It doesn't even matter and stuff like that. And so you can find that medium that works for you, sort of your audience, your community. Well, do you talk to them? It sort of sounds like they're trying to get them back into that childlike state, you know, the, where, where we just played and nobody had any judgment. And so it sort of sounds like that's what you're encouraging them to do. Yeah, we always, I mean, 
in person, we always say this is a non-judgment zone, meaning, you know what I mean? There's no judgment and um, play, exactly. Kind of foster your inner child and just start playing and see what happens. I have a beautiful story. It was my last in-person art break. And this woman came into the space and she was kind of like, like looking like she was interested. And, you know, you, you have a group of friends, you know, you become friends when you make art. And she was so timid. She's, she was interested. And we're like, come on, sit down. And she's like, no, 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 no. But then she started sitting down and she started creating, but really like timidly. And then all of a sudden um, she said, I have a story to tell you. And so when she was, I think 14, I mean, and this is a random stranger that's starting to tell us her story. And she said, when I was 14, I wanted to take art class and it was a Catholic school. And um, I the uh, first day of the days, like draw a tree. So I drew this tree, I love the tree. It was just amazing. The next day she comes to class and the teacher calls her up and she says, you can't be in this class. You can't make art, you're not an artist. So yeah. she was crushed and this lady had to be about in her sixties. And she mm. said, I have not picked up anything to make art. And she was there and she was having so much fun. It's just by even telling the story, you know what I mean? This art wound. And then it was about an hour later, she gets up and she's like, I'm so emotional. Thank you so much. Oh. It, was such, it was so beautiful. Did you have an art wound, either of you? Yes. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yes. All right. Why don't, I'm going to tell you my art wound. I had three of them. <laughs> Please don't sing, mouth the words, you know, in choir, you know, and I love to sing. Yes, I've got a terrible voice. There's no doubt. But <laughs> I like to sing anyway. The second was the, the teacher said, you are a terrible writer. You know, and the third was I was kicked out of a painting class in college. The guy said, you're a terrible artist, get out. Ugh. And it was like devastating. I, yes. I, I was like, and I didn't have the wherewithal, the confidence to say, I'm, I don't care. And right. I didn't paint for 12 years. You know, thank wow. God I didn't listen to these people. I wrote books, I've done art, I've sold pieces. I, you know, I've got like, you know, but it, those art wounds, they, they go with you until somebody gives you permission again. And they, you hope it's yourself. But I think outside, we need those outside voices saying, it's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I think the more you share sort of your art wound story and tell your art story, the more people realize that everybody has them and everybody has, everybody has preconceived notions what it is to be an artist. I mean, I was talking to my husband the other day and I said, I think there are still people that would consider what I do not to be art. The fact that I'm not the one holding the, the paintbrush or the marker. I am the one facilitating the art making, you know? And he's like, well, you're a conceptual artist. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, but a lot of people don't consider that art. And I'm sort of like, and to me, it doesn't matter <laughs> because right, if singing makes you feel better, who cares if you sound like an elephant screaming? you sound like an opera singer you know, it doesn't matter right like I've never been interested in talent I've only ever been interested is how does it make you feel and I carry art wounds from grad school because I just everybody was I was like I'm not interested in talent and I said that in a class and the entire class was like <gasps> devastated and I said I want to know how my art makes you feel and if it pisses you off because I don't care it looks like I don't care about talent tell me that you know and and so yeah I definitely have a ton of those kind of interactions and and to me that the, the answer is it all doesn't none of it matters because what really matters is you take five minutes you take your art break that matches you and works for you and then how do you feel do you feel better then why would you not do it? Why would you encourage someone not to do that? That, like, to me, that blows my mind. I can't wrap my head around that. Right, right. I know before I got on today, I took my little art break. So I always scribble and doodle. You know, mm -hmm. I scribble oh, and I write a poem, you know, and then I got up and I dance because that's how I calm myself when I'm getting a little anxious. So, right. you know, so I take art breaks all day long and they want it too. So, yeah. So, what about you, Lisa? Oh, I have a lot. <laughs> well, share at least one. Uh, trauma, trauma, trauma. Um, when I was, I think I was in fifth grade, we were doing a turtle and um, I wasn't doing the turtle the way that it was supposed to, you know, the A, B, C, D. And my teacher took it and just crushed it. <laughs> and that was heartbreaking. And then I remember being in undergrad school, in art school, and um, it was drawing class. And um, I drew this uh, it was, a, I think it was a final project and I drew a, a face and I thought it was good, but the teacher was just ragging. His eyes look like cockroaches, like over and over. He was relentless and I was, you know, you know, hypersensitive, you know, 
18 year old and that just beat them right, beat right. Up. and that's what I think so many people don't realize all these art wounds they carry and I think that's why I want to tell these stories because people if they know they're not alone they have an opportunity to rewrite history and and create a new story that transforms their lives you know so I, I, always, I go ahead yeah. Oh, I agree with you. I think the I think a lot of people assume that if you're an artist, you don't have an art wound. Mm -hmm. And what I would like to say is that I think everybody, Lauren said it, everybody has an art wound. And it's just you gotta get, you know, and then you you the judgment thing, you gotta not care. And you gotta exactly like Lauren said, how does it make you feel? How do you feel after? Because I really know that art saves lives. And so why not? You yeah, know, I mean, art, art, art definitely saved my life. So I mean, I don't yeah. Think, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I was that, you know, I, I, I was a diary keeper and it turned me just writing my day into me writing poetry, into me drawing, into me processing my emotions when I was a teenager. And if I didn't have that, and then if I didn't put a camera in my head, hand at 14, who knows what I would have done instead, you know? Yeah. I, I totally understand that. I mean, I got my first camera at 16, so I get it. Yeah. You know, it, it changed my life. I could look through a lens. I also could get um, a perspective. I didn't have to be the center of life in some ways. I needed to step back and be the witness. And, you know, what did I look at? I mean, I used to a lot of dead logs, which I found very interesting. And yeah. then uh, laundry hanging around. I love oh. to travel. I know, Lisa, you do too. And I'd love oh. to talk about how travel has influenced your art as well. Oh, yeah. um, but those kinds of things, you know, looking at when looking through windows peeking behind the door, you know, looking at who's standing there behind the curtain. And it allowed me to be introspective in my in looking at them, but also looking at my own life. What am I hiding? What's, what's my secret? What's behind it? And, you know, you never know how it's going to come. So I love the fact that you're, you're totally into reflection. I think that's a really key piece. It's reflection for yourself and for others as well. Yeah, when I was like in high school, I was really dark and I was kind of an emo <laughs> goth character. <laughs> and but no, I used to draw such dark things. I mean, and it's not that I could ever communicate it, but I could draw it. And when I drew it, it, it released itself out of me and eventually it healed me through that process. You know, I went from deep despair into transcendence, you know, through my art. So it can it can it can heal you it can be your bliss but it can also be you know what I mean like how you really express your true core so right right you know yeah. I, I watched my own life go through you know transitions all my pictures at one point when I started getting back into art were all dark they were all yeah. black and white and gray and muddy <laughs> you know and then I knew when I was healing when it was a it wasn't about me I started thinking about other people and the right. colors changed so I could watch yeah. my own you know change and it's really interesting because I gave a piece, I did one piece, which was one of my first really, I knew I was healing, you know, it was called um, Door of Truth. And it was mm. called, and it was two doors. And then there was these colors, you know, and it had some pastels in it. And it was like, wow. And I just gave it to a Northwest Casa, which works with women who are survivors, you know, oh. abuse and stuff. And they put it in their lobby, you know, wow. people need to see that there is a possibility of growth and change and healing. You know, and I think that's what we're giving them by talking about these stories and the wounds that we've carried. So thank you both. I so appreciate it. Yeah. But let's talk about now, Lisa, I, I'd like to talk about spirituality and art because I know yes. that's part of your journey. Yeah. Um, well, it is my journey. Art is yeah. a spiritual process for me. And I guess I can tell you a story. When I was, um, my mom died 26 years ago and I went to Nepal and art was my way of processing, like I said. I went to Nepal and um, I was very into Buddhism at that time. And some initiate painted the green Tara. I was really, my, I just had lost my mom. So I was in deep, deep, deep abyss of grief. I, and you know, when you're in grief, it's just <laughs> beyond belief. You don't know where the light is. So somebody had painted this green Tara on the trek. And when I went home, I actually painted her and she became like my, my, my light, my mother at that moment in time. So it, it's almost like it, she's transcendent, like the green Tara is the mother of all Buddhas and she's compassion. So art has really been my spiritual awakening also, you know what I mean? It's like, it, um, it leads me, it guides me. And it becomes an, imp yeah. Now, I was gonna say, it sounds like it's a creation story for you. You know, it's taking you to another place and that is your creation story and you, you're expressing yourself through your art, so. And I think what, 
when you do create, you do tap into something that is so much larger than yourself. And a lot of times when you step back from the work, you're like, did I do that? Or who did that? I mean, I don't know. A lot of times even my hand moves without me moving it. It's like, who's, you know, I'm a conduit of something larger than myself, which is so, so amazing. So that's I real. That. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to talk a little bit more, Lauren, maybe about one of your projects that you did, um, the self, you know, pro and, you know, project or something, one of these communal projects and talk about yeah. it and how you did that. And because that's something, again, it, it appears so simple, but right. it's not. But, you know, but it brings together community, but you're not asking anybody to be a made, you know, famous artist or do anything. But right. so why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. So um, I was I was just thinking as Lisa was speaking about the spirituality of, of her art, my art. Um, so I have this idea that, you know, we all exist on this web. You know, it's just sort of the systems uh, theory and that um, every person carries that string with them and we're all on this web and so if the string uh, goes away if that person leaves the world is changed forever and um, I'm trying to communicate that through my art because I feel like the world would be a different place a better place if everyone felt like they played a significant role in this system we live in and so all my artwork is based off of that sort of idea that concept that philosophy so I'm trying to get people to come together, to create together, to spark conversation and connection. And so thank you for acknowledging that it's harder to do. The, I, the uh, outcomes look very simple um, on purpose. Uh, they're very difficult to facilitate. But yes, yeah, so the, a recent project I did was the self, uh, self and portrait project. Uh, and that was with one of my collaborators, Katrina Henry. And we were inside a storefront window that was empty. It just had the two of us in it to begin with. And then we hung uh, panels of paper behind us and we asked people uh, two questions. Uh, the first question was use one word that you would use to describe yourself. And then the second question would, was use one word that someone else would use to describe you. And that's step one and step two. And step three was to stand on an X and, and get your portrait taken by me. And so what happened is about over 150 people in our small town of Corvallis, Oregon, gave us some words. Uh, none of the words matched each other. Uh, and they were a lot of times opposite, uh, you know, and very revealing. And um, again, I was hoping to get people to have a conversation internally while also having a conversation externally with their gr greater community. And then the, the portrait was about again, creating connection, we took one piece from every person's face and created a, a portrait of Corvallis to sort of communicate that we're all in this together, um, that we all struggle mentally with lots of things, with who we are, who we think we are, and who we think other people think we are, and who we want to be, you know? And so, um, yeah, so there a lot, all my projects are really similar to that. Um, it's also from an art perspective, really handing that paintbrush over to the viewer to show them that they can, they can be the artist as well. I love that. I love that. Thank you. Lisa, why yeah. don't you share one of your art projects that you've been working, maybe one of your environmental things that you've done? Oh yeah, I've done, um, I used to do tree shrines around the world. So basically, yeah, it was really cool. I honored the tree. I love trees, by the way. I love the environment and love nature. I gotta um, tell you, I just got this. Oh, cool. Yeah. I love that. That's beautiful. So what I, I love to travel, I love to go to sacred sites around the world. And what I would do is create shrines around the trees in honor. So at first I would use like pigments, spices um, from the Asian store. Um, really beautiful, very bright, like vibrant. And then I sometimes incorporate like organic material, kind of like um, Andy Goldsworthy. And the cool thing was I did them like anonymous, anonymously. <laughs> and um, I did one in Mill Valley and my friend's husband discovered it. So it was like just a random stranger has kind of like come upon this tree that's being made into art. And they just like, he said it totally shifted his whole experience. So. I love that. I love yeah. that. It's really fun because you're really connecting to the tree and you're also honoring nature and you're also awakening the viewer too, who kind of is on a hike somewhere and all of a sudden, whoa, what is this? This is beautiful. Right. I know a lot of happened during COVID. A lot of people like painted stones and yes. then left them in different places. 
because they wanted that connection. They wanted people to see beauty and hope and things like that. So it sort of leads me into how did COVID affect you and your organization? What changes did you have to make? And are you still making for that? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, as you uh, learned previously in the last couple of minutes, our, our whole goal is to get people to connect with each other by like physically being at an art table together. So that became uh, extremely difficult uh, when COVID hit, uh, you know, and so we basically shifted Art Break Day online. That was our, that's our largest event. Uh, so it was online in uh, 2020. It'll be online again uh, this year for both of us. Uh, we do have a couple of locations that are, uh, feel safe enough uh, to do it in person. And, um, it, it shifted the way we're connecting. We're still trying yeah. to facilitate connection. Um, and it was a different experience for sure, but it was, it had, you know, it has its pros and cons, just like everything. Um, I thought what my experience was, so basically usually art break day, I am facilitating my own physical space while like texting Lisa and all of our, <laughs> like, how's it going? And staying connected that way. And then when it's virtual, um, I really did feel that energy of we're all we're all taking an art break together um, because we were we were all on the screen together mm -hmm. and taking an art break and so the connection was was still there just in a different way and then it also just um, you know uh, prompted this brand new project because Lisa and I are like you know we uh, people really need to just art take these art breaks like and and we need people who aren't necessarily like seeking us out to take them and so we started stuffing art supplies in little libraries across the united states we've got a whole bunch of volunteers to do it for us because that to us felt like it was a way to access a, a different audience than the one that we have already captivated um and it uh we've we've uh passed out uh, almost 400 packets uh this year and um, we've received amazing feedback from our volunteers that have been stuffing their little libraries and from folks who have stumbled upon it. Um, and it's just a reminder that you can, you can use art uh, in a time of crisis to process it, to heal from it, um, and to just get your feelings out about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, my, I picked up one of them, the, an art project here that was from our library that was in one of the, you know, like the newspaper machines. And, yeah. and it was great because I brought it home and it was, it was supposed to be making some kind of, it had a, a lantern or a light or something. And my granddaughter came over and, and she said, I, I, do you have, you know, she wanted pipe cleaners and I don't have any, but she took the bowl that was in there. There's a paper bowl and the yarn that was in there and she created and a balloon they were all in this piece and she created a jellyfish hat for herself I mean oh, it was yeah. so wonderful to That's see so her cute. take somebody else's lesson and idea and be creative you know she's six and a half and she was delighted I was delighted you know it was so fun to do that and that's what happens when you give kids materials that they wouldn't necessarily have so I do love that appreciate that yeah so, go ahead Lisa Oh, I was just thinking about COVID. And I think Lauren and I, through the whole pandemic, is we we know that art is really important. And we know that art is really important for everybody. And trying just, I think that's what was really underlined, that everybody needs to do art. And this is the way we're going to heal from this trauma from the COVID. And it doesn't matter, like you say, just scribbling, taking an art break, take five minutes for yourself. Because also, we really feel like art is self-care. I think we talked about that before. It's like epic self-care. Right. So, and it can be for five minutes, it can be for five hours. Right, and especially right now with this trauma going on and on and yeah. on. Yeah. You know, we do need more self-care and they and everybody needs tools and tips and ideas. What can you do in two minutes even, you know? Exactly. So yeah. what are some of your prompts that you that you love to share with people? You know, so I, I, was, I was looking at your website. So I love, personally, I love the one about the vision. And then you put it in a plant and a planter and then you grow something over it. Oh, I love, I that, love one. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's so fun. I sometimes do that on paintings too. You know, on the, on the bottom of the painting, you kind of write your intention or, you know, what you want to manifest or what you want to heal. And then you paint over it. But Lauren, what's your favorite art break idea? 
Yeah. So, um, you know, I'm sort of on a mission to, as you could probably figure out to get people who wouldn't normally make art to make art. So I like to find ways where they don't even need art supplies to do it. Uh, and so, you know, one of my favorite ones is just to go sit somewhere, find somewhere to sit and uh, pick a color and see how many things of that color that you can find, pick a shape uh, or close your eyes and uh, try to separate all the sounds from one another and listen to one sound at a time. Very meditative process, right? And, and when you do something like that, you do only need about five minutes to sort of recenter yourself. And my hope is that uh, the next time someone might bring uh, a pen and paper and, uh, you know, to kind of close their eyes and draw what they hear uh, or write a poem while they're uh, looking at something, whatever it is that they're looking for. And it's a step-by-step -step process uh, because the deeper you go into art making, uh, the more fruitful it will be. Uh, so if you make art making your daily practice in terms of like actually drawing something or photographing something or painting something, and you made that part of your daily life, uh, you would be better for it. But if you don't have that kind of time commitment or you're too afraid because you're carrying a bunch of art wounds, I totally get that. And I, but I would rather you take five minutes to do something than nothing at all, because that's also uh, a, a step in the right direction. That's good. What's my favorite? There's a, so many art breaks that are my favorite. I love, I love even like drawing it your, yourself in the mirror you know, and that could be just a gesture, but really looking at yourself is always really cool. Um, and that could be just with a piece of paper and a marker, or it can be more intense. Um, yeah, I think what's really cool, it's like art as a daily practice, taking an art break. Like, I think Ray, you always say, I scribble, just scribble it out, which is so fantastic. Just let, let it out. Um, and I think it's really about being mindful. Like if it's for five minutes, just mindfully create. And we always say, Lauren and I, before, it's like, kind of check in yourself, how do you feel before you take your art break? And then how do you feel after? And eventually, if you do daily art breaks every day, you're going to be like, oh, this is, this is like coffee for me. <laughs> you know right, what I mean? Right. It, it's either energizing or calming or whatever you need in that moment. Right. And I, I agree with you. You know, it's like, I, I found during COVID, this, I've spent a lot more time getting up early and going outside and taking photographs. That is my joy of looking at the sun, sunrise. I never, never got up that early to go to watch the sunrise, but it, it, it is calming to me. It brings me joy and, and it sets me up for the day, you know? So a couple times a week, I'm usually out there looking at the sun, sunrise. So, you know, you just never know what can inspire someone. So, okay. I would like to, you know, I know we can go on forever with this conversation, but we're, yeah. we're going to have to sort of wrap it up a little bit. So where do you see Art Break going? What's the future of Art Break? And then what is the legacy you'd like to leave personally in your community and around the world? Lauren? <laughs> I know, it's a big, broad question. Yes. Yeah, I love, no, it's a great question. Um, a great question. I, I, you know what? I think you should think about that. So that's a good thing to think about. Um, I definitely see that, uh, you know, art is moving. We're really focused on uh, the notion of taking an art break. Uh, you know, our tagline is take an art break, make the world better. And the reason it's that is because we know that when you take art break, you become better and better people make a better world. And so again, it sounds very simple, but it's actually extremely complex. Uh, and so I think that we will continue because Lisa and I just always have, we've been together since 2008 and we just, we always ride that edge. We like to push ourselves further. This is our artwork. Uh, art is moving as part of our artwork. And so we're constantly coming up with new creative ways to reach new audiences. So I just see us, we come up with a project once a year or so, and we launch it and then we, and we go forward with it or we don't, depending on how it's received. Um, and I think Art Break Day will always exist in some form. Um, mm -hmm. Excited uh, for you know the future when it can be in person again, because it is such a powerful event. Um, and perhaps we can combine a, a physical and a virtual event as well, because there was some power in the virtual to actually see someone uh, at a different time of day coming on the screen and just creating. It was, it was so great. Um, and the conversations that launched from that. And then for me personally, um, yeah, I just would, 
uh, really hope that the work I do through Art is Moving and my own personal work uh, just encourages people to find the art break that fits them. And uh, because there is one, there's one for everyone. And uh, sort of to break down the stigma that, it, that uh, an art break is painting, drawing, et cetera, uh, that it can be pretty much anything. Um, uh, so yeah, that's what I, I really hope to leave behind. Okay, beautiful. Yeah. What was that, what was that question, Anne? <laughs> there were two. It was sort of where do you see the future going for art is moving? Where would mm -hmm. you like it to go? Mm -hmm. And then what is your personal legacy that you'd like to leave? Okay. Well, I feel like, I mean, ever since Laura and I began, we were trying to change the paradigm, you know, shift the paradigm where art is for all people, art is for everyone. And like take the take the fear out of it. Um, make it, you know, like you said, the inner child, like, why not? You know what I mean? I've, like, I think over these years, we've redefined what an art break is. And I think more people are open to taking the art break because now it's not afraid, it's not fearful anymore. You know, it's just play, sit, there's no judgment. You don't have to show anybody. So it's really shifting that paradigm. Um, and I see that it, I, my hope for artists moving is, um, that we can get, because Lauren and I are always like, how do we get the people that just don't even want to do it? You know what I mean? Like to change, <laughs> to shift, to, you know, somehow mind, have the mind shifts and that they know that this empowers them and this makes them feel good. And then, you know, in turn, kind of the, the ripple effect. So the more people that we transform through these art processes, people are going to see them and go, oh yeah, I can take an art break. I can take it. It's, you know, it's not tough. So that's why I think we are continuing to shift the paradigm and, you know, hoping that art is not um, a scary word for anybody at all, you know, and for my own, um, I really, my own legacy, I think I'm, we are living our legacy right now. You know, I, I would hope your life is your legacy and every day is your legacy. Um, I would like to empower people. I would like to empower more and more people through art in its process. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, cause we know it makes a difference. And um, yeah, and I think just also my own art, I, I want to um, evolve and refine my own work. And cause I know when my art's more refined I'm becoming more refined inside. So that's another thing, so. Okay, well, uh, two things, you both, you wrote a book together so do you want to talk about that and how people can get it and then how they can get a hold of you? Okay. And find out more. Yeah. So um, Experiments in Creativity was a project we did, uh, gosh, way back when, what, that 2010 or? Oh, it's published okay. 2015. Okay. Oh. So yeah, we made, <laughs> we made the book after we did the project. It was sort of influenced by this project where Lisa and I no longer lived together. And so we uh, would challenge each other to experiment with our own creativity uh, with, a, with a question or a project. And then the other person would respond within that month. And it was just a super fun way for us to stay connected, but also encourage other people to um, take an art break on a regular basis. So this book is for folks who are, have, have bought into the notion that taking an art break is important because they're uh, more intensive. Uh, they require more time, at least 30 minutes. Um, but basically it's a workbook. And so you will get 30 art break ideas uh, along with reflection questions. And that's available on our website. Um, you'll see it if you scroll down to the bottom to our footnote and you click on that and you can get it for yourself. And then you can get a hold of us through our website. Uh, artismoving.org is the easiest way to get a hold of us. Okay, and you both have your own personal websites too. So people can go there. I just wanna let them know. So there's lots of ways to find you. And I so appreciate the time you've given today. And you oh, yeah. are women who dare. And I love, I love it. it. So thank you. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Thank you. It's, it's an honor. Thank you so much. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you.